Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to improve your squat mobility in three moves. But before we get into that, make sure that you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content like this. Ready? Let's get into it. All right guys, the goal of today's video is going to be to show you how to improve your squat mobility in three simple moves. So we're gonna be using today a dowel, a bench, and a pull-up band. Now the pull-up band, I would say use a resistance of somewhere around 75 pounds up to 100 pounds to get the most effectiveness out of it. And you will need somewhere to anchor that band. So I'm using my squat rack today but some of these pull-up bands, you can get a nice door anchor system that would work as well if you're working out at home and you don't have access to the squat rack like I do. So that's the equipment we're gonna need today. Before we get into the actual mobilities themselves, it's very important that we understand when we talk about improving mobility, the very first thing we need to be able to do is organize and stabilize our spinal column well. If we can't protect our spinal column, our body's not going to allow us to go into a range of motion that it sees unsafe. So our central nervous system is always our primary focus for our body and it's always going to protect the central nervous system which is that spinal column. So if you can't organize your spinal column well, that'll be the first thing to improve to overall improve every mobility, not simply talking about squats alone. The next thing we want to be aware of is our ability to actually generate torque at the shoulders and at the hips during the squat movement and other lifts as well, but that is the next key component. If we are unable to truly achieve the maximal positioning for torque that is needed to generate the lift, then my core is going to break down because I'm unable to generate that torque. So our core spinal organization and our torque are two things that work together to actually improve our mobility overall. Now the mobilities we're going to be looking at specifically today are going to be one that's going to improve your ankle dorsiflexion while the hip is in an externally rotated position and we're going to do that from a flexed hip as well. The other one we're going to be doing is activating the hip flexors while releasing the hip adductors. So that's usually a common place for tightness. We're going to open up those hips and allow you to actually get into that external rotation a little bit deeper. And then the final one we're going to be looking at is the upper body, that thoracic spinal column being able to extend that thoracic spinal column and stabilize it from the musculature of the upper back while our shoulders are also in a stable externally rotated position. This would look something more like a front rack, but it can be useful for back, uh, back loaded positions, back squats. Um, or even the overhead squat position. But before we go any further today, make sure you take a moment to drop by the description and grab your free copy of Recalibrate. These are my nutrition guidelines for mobility and human performance. This is gonna have you dropping fat, gaining muscle, working to resolve any pain issues that you have at this point, and setting you up to prevent any injury in the long run, as well as optimizing your overall athletic potential as a human being. All right guys, so the very first one we're gonna start off with today is a banded distraction of the ankle joint, which is gonna help the joint glide a little bit better over one another with the bones of the foot and the ankle meeting there. So what I wanna do is anchor my band down low at the base here, and I'm gonna take that and place it around the front of my ankle with a bench right out front. So I have a good amount of tension and pull, pulling downward and back at the front of the ankle there as I'm working. Now from my foot, I wanna make sure that I have three points of contact. This is gonna be my first metatarsal behind my big toe, fifth metatarsal behind my small toe, and then my heel, so I have a nice triangle base. And I'm trying to actually grip the foot into the bench as if I were standing there ready for a squat. Now from there, what I wanna do is get my back leg back behind me, on the small toes so I'm internally rotating that hip getting those glutes engaged and then I'm gonna drive that knee over the middle and small toes 
So from here, in order to get my hip into external rotation, I'm actually going to push my knee open as I hold the foot down so I'm not letting that foot open up at all in this position. So I'm rotating, opening my chest toward the knee here, and you'll feel some stretching at the hip as well as possibly at the calf as you drive that knee over the toes there. So the tightness that you'll normally see in this position that will kind of start to show itself is that of the Achilles tendon. Now, if you have access to a lacrosse ball at the same time, you can always place a lacrosse ball up at the high calf here, and that's gonna provide a nice release of the high tissues of the calf, which could also be restricting your ankle dorsiflexion. So we can attack that with a two-pronged approach in one simple move by placing that ball up under there and then also driving the knees forward into that position. But I'm gonna hold this up to two minutes per side when I'm doing it, and then I'm gonna move on from there. In the second mobility here, I'm gonna be using my box, but you can use this wall, it would be just as fine, it doesn't matter, but something that you can equally set the feet on to set up the position well and make sure that we have some measure to work with here. But in this mobility, what we're gonna be doing is actually actively opening up the hip adductors, getting the glutes to engage in hip extension, as well as the hip flexors engaging to actually pull me down below that 90 degree angle of the hip and knee. So what I wanna to do to set up here, and you might want a mat as well for this, so if you need that, you can get that. But we're gonna go ahead and place the heels at the edge of the box here. My goal is just to get my inner knee down on both sides. So I don't wanna feel like I'm on my knee at all, kneecap at all. I'm on that inner knee, so we're starting to really stretch those hip adductors to begin with. Now you might already feel this kind of forcing your spinal column into a funny position. What you want to do is go down to your forearms and imagine doing a plank. So I'm going to actually tuck my tailbone under a little bit so my glutes are engaging. I'm letting my feet just kind of stay open, flat to the wall there, or flat to my box. And I'm going to use my hip flexors and lower abdomen to actually pull my butt and tailbone toward the box as much as possible. Now my arms can assist with a little bit of a pushback, but I really want to feel the lower abdomen, the hip flexors, doing a pull into that depth. Now at first, that's gonna feel kinda tight when you're first getting into it. So we're gonna try a few reps to get it going, really. And it's gonna make you sweat a little bit. So take your time, breathe through it as you're working. Focus on good core positioning, and each time you come out of it, use your glutes to help push your hips back into that extended position. You can already see my hips are getting deeper and deeper into this position with each rep. And now it's this move alone that's going to help with things such as the knees collapsing inward toward the big toe where you get that knee cave or that knee valgus or that butt wink that you normally see at the bottom of the squat. We usually get pulled into that position because we lack the strength at the hip flexors. So this is going to help us actually pull actively into the bottom position of the squat and then be able to extend back out from there. All right, and for the very last mobility, I'm gonna be using my dowel. What I wanna do is grab with the palms up just wider than my shoulders, okay? I'm gonna place the tip of the elbows at the edge of the bench here, and I'm gonna scoot back away from it so my arms are extending already. I wanna reach back for my shoulders, and as I sit back, I'm gonna actually push my chest toward the floor. But I wanna keep my abdomen engaged, so I'm not just arching to get there, I wanna make sure my stomach stays braced very well. The stick is actually helping my shoulders go into an externally rotated position. So as my hands stay wide, if I can walk my elbows more narrow, that's gonna help get that externally rotated, stable shoulder position that we wanna create. I wanna make sure that my chin is tucked a little bit, my neck is staying neutral through my cervical spine as well. 
and I'm pulling myself back, butt toward the heels, as I drive the chest toward the floor. Now I should feel a lot of activity going on at the musculature of my upper back. I don't just wanna make this passive. I wanna see if I can actively flex those muscles to help bring my shoulder blades down and back further into this position. All right, there you guys have it. Three simple moves that you can perform to improve your squat mobility today. Test, retest, I guarantee you'll see instant improvement in your squat depth and overall the feel of your squat just from those three mobilities. If you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that thumbs up down below and share it with a friend. You know they need to improve their squat depth. Let's just get it to them. Leave a comment, let me know what questions you have. I would love to answer them for you. And if you have not already, make sure you take a moment to hit that subscribe button. Oh, and drop by the description, grab Recalibrate. Make sure you take a moment to look at the nutrition guidelines for mobility and human performance that I've put together. Put a lot of time into it, and I can promise you, you will see a huge difference if you start following these things. Finally, if you guys want something tailored specifically to you, make sure you take a moment to drop by the website and grab your one hour free strategy call with myself. One hour, me, you, working on your goals and the best direction on how to get there. So, take advantage of that. I wanna thank you guys for watching today. We'll see you next time.